So the question is, what are you doing, Tom? I'm taking a micromorph sample. What is a micromorph sample? Good question, I. Pardon? Micromorph sample. Is How is that different to like a phytolith one? Well, micromorph sample, we're actually taking out soil in situ. We're looking for a profile, so we're looking to take the soil out in a tin. And if with a phytolith sample, you don't need that. You just need the soil. Because it's not about the stratigraphy. It's about the content of the sample. Um, micromorph samples are. Micro most samples basically are a way to get the stratigraphy, which we can see in the ground, under a microscope. Along with all the inclusions within it as well. Mm -hmm. For example, you can see phytoliths in, um, in a micromorph sample, and you can see, you know, you can see pollen, but you can see little you know, planes of stuff and charcoal, and you can do species ID on charcoal from it, all sorts of stuff. So it's basically a way of getting all that information out intact, and most importantly, together in the one place which is actually quite rare, because usually when we take a sample, we extract just one thing from it. Mm -hmm. So you have to take loads of different samples and process them in loads of different ways. <coughs> so, which is not the case with Micromorph. So that's why I think it's pretty brilliant. Is that our main reason for doing it in this trend? Yeah, what we want to do, what I'm doing with my PhD, is basically comparing the depositional sequences of mounds and their micro-components. see if they're all deposited in the same way, what they actually consist of. I mean, you can already see that this one's very different from the one in, the ones in Trench 6. And actually under the microscope, all the ones in Trench 6 are very different from each other. And even vertically throughout the same deposit, they're very different. You can see all sorts of crazy inclusions and stuff. So that's essentially the purpose, is to get this stratigraphy under a microscope where we can observe in a huge amount more detail. Will there be any detail we can get straight away from the micro sample, no. or is it not until it's been through the lab that you can no. work out anything? Yeah, because what, it, what happens is that it gets set in resin, or it gets dried through solvent exchange, and then set in resin, um, and when it's in resin then it can be cut down okay. into a slice about 30 microns thick. Trying to get yeah. the, the stratigraphy and the, and the inclusions of a area of soil under a microscope basically. Yeah. So that's why we take it in situ in a tin and then that tin is, the soil in that tin is dried through mm -hmm. solvent exchange. It's actually like a mini pool. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And then we take a very thin slice out of about 30 microns and set that in a slice and lift it under a microscope. Mm -hmm. so it's very simple. So what I've done is cut back the section to get rid of all the dried stuff because that's going to be weak within the tin and it's, you're going to have all sorts of contamination which has fallen down these little cracks and things like that which yeah. we don't want to have. Um, I mean, you'd be able to see it, but it would just be a sort of weakness within the slide, basically, and you don't really want that. So I've cut that back so we've got this nice fresh soil, and um, we're doing it into this mound here, um, which you can already see is very different from the mounds in Trend 6, but it's still a burnt mound, and that's really what the question we're trying to answer here is, how do all these mounds differ in terms of the depositional sequencing, and I think probably more importantly, just their inclusions, and you can see how different this one is. Um, so, and we can tell a lot of stuff from Micromorph, we can tell about... Um, well, we can see the, we can see the microstratigraphy, we can tell actually what the soil is made of, the matrix of it at a far higher level than you can at the macro scale. Um, you get all the inclusions, so you get species ID, all the charcoal, you get all the fight lists, you see all the organics, all that sort of stuff within the slide. So it's just a, a very nice way of gathering all of this in, in information, you know, um, geoarchaeologically and environmental information and stratigraphic information together in one place. Um, you know, where you can look at it at 400 times magnification. So it's very simple, I've dug this little slot in here. I'm just now gonna, I mean, depending on the soil, you can just hammer this in, but that'll create fractures around the edge of the slide, which will impact upon the stratigraphy and may actually impact on the, upon the, the entirety of the slide if it, the soil's quite wet. I think the soil's quite um, dry. I think it's probably wet enough that we could do that, but a better way to do it is just to Try and cut a little hole for it with the leaf trowel. 
for each side and then press it into that hole and then just keep cutting and pressing and then pressing. It's quite an arduous process. Um, but it is worth doing to make sure that the slide is legit because processing one of these slides to the stage where I can look at it under the microscope costs 100 quid. So basically we don't want to Um, we use these junction boxes. You know, if you had any wiring or electrics, this box can used to junction all sorts of wires together. Because they cost 50p each, and QBNA tins, which are the, the properly designed ones of these, cost 30 quid or something like that. And you can use them again, you can't use these again, but you know, it's sort of. Similar to a column sampling, the white needs to ease it in yeah, rather awesome. than slam it in. This is quite nice firm soil, so it's pretty simple to do. If you do it on loose stuff, it's an absolute nightmare. Well, compared to taking them out in trench six, how does this? This is so much simpler. Yeah. It took us about an hour to get each one in and out of trench six. And we took. Is that because of the soil's a lot looser? Do the amount of stones have an impact on that as well? I mean, a huge amount of impact upon where we can put our junction to our boxes, basically. trying to avoid is any um, voids or zones of compaction within it, which when it's in transit will then lead to it being, lead to basically um, movement within the box. Same like with a block lift yeah. basically. Right. Just trying to keep it all as in situ and intact as possible. Yeah. You got the range there, it's spread out a bit. Right. So, all it takes is a break. Yeah. There are different methods to this. This is the one that we use. Um, you can basically dig the ho a whole block out of the section just as a column and wrap it up, and then you can. That means you have more soil, so you can process half of it for micromorph and then subsample from the other half for like pilots, for example, to get really precise samples, saying, oh no, we know exactly where this thing is and we want to sample it. So you know, under the microscope, basically, you can sample. Um, which is pretty cool, but it's a lot more expensive. Because right. you've got yeah, more stuff to process, more soil to process. Yeah. And it's a lot harder as well. You have a tin to keep it all together using myself, to plank on the show. But I'm wondering if I'm actually left-handed. Would I? I've had it. I switch very regularly. Yeah. Because I just have to get tired. Yeah. Going nice, is it? Yeah, it's going to be fine. Benefit the junction box as well as you can see yeah. where the soil is, so we're getting close to it. Just a bit more at the bottom. Share. Uh, no, I'll, if you just take the photo, I'll do it later.
bottom needs to grow a little bit more. Lab technicians who process these don't like you using junction boxes because they have to cut them off with saws rather than keep you anything so the sample just slides out. But if I'm paying them £100 to do a sample, I don't really care. <laughs> that it's hit a stone and that's why it's refusing to go in anymore. Wouldn't be the end of the world but I'm probably content with that, shouldn't move too much more in transit. Um, so what I'll do now is cut it out, I'm going to cut it out yeah. not quite flush and cut it out, just so we get a little bit more sample, which we can, it yeah, doesn't really matter, we lose it. Okay, so what we do is going up the barrel all the way to the barrel even, or? Yeah, all the way to the edge. Okay, so we're going to have a nice long sort of line. Yeah. No. Just pop off. Uh. Okay. Done. Job's good.